Good afternoon, Miami Temple. I don't know why you have to repeat the question. Good afternoon, Miami Temple. <laughs> let us all stand. Let us sing. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with his glory. We have come today to praise the name of our Lord. We have come to bring an offering and to sing the one who deserves the honor and the glory and the praise. I know that you know very well the song, so let us all sing the name to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Sing it with me. We stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We're gonna bow down. We bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He! And together we sing. Everyone sing. Yeah. 
the Lord Almighty, holy, holy. Once again. Holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, holy, holy. Once again, sing it out, holy. Holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, holy, holy. One last time, holy. Holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, holy, holy. You can come forward and give your morning styles and offerings as we sing the song Shoulders. Confusion's my companion, and despair holds me for ransom. I will feel no fear. I know that you are near. When I'm caught deep in the valley, with chaos for my country.
provide the sacrifice. If you provide the spirit.
Happy Sabbath. Uh, this is a special song for Mother's Own Mother's Day. And uh, I'd like to take it as a reminder to all of us that God entrusted all his children to be taken care of by these beautiful moms uh, all over the world. And it is a, a very special time now that we're going to sing this in honor to all the moms that are here today. Thank you for watching over me All of the sleepless nights you lay awake Thank you for knowing when to hold me close And when to let me go Thank you for every stepping stone And for the path that always leads me home time you took to see the heart inside of me gave me the rules to start this life and then you gave me wings to fly and I learned to dream because you Treasure reward to its worth the gift of a mother's love. Thank you for every sunlit day that filled the corners of my memory. Thank you for every Every selfless song, song deep, I know you did for me. Thank you for giving me the choice to search my soul till I could find my voice. I thank you for teaching me to be strong enough to bear. and your church family we would like all of the women to stand all of the mothers and all of the women who play the role of mothers to stand ladies if you have played any part in a child's life if you're a teacher if you are a just if you're a mentor if please stand because we want to we want to honor you today thank you thank you now i'm going to ask for the kids to help us because we have special flowers for you so if the kids could come up please thank you and i'd like them to give each each 
each mother standing to give them a flower. I'm going to need all those ladies to stand right back up. We are not done. Stand right back up. And I still need all the kids. So once you've given a flower, I need you guys to come back. Because not only do they deserve flowers, but wouldn't you agree that moms are a lot of things? These women are a lot of things to us, right? They cook, they clean, they take us places, they help us with our homework. Thank you. But I'm going to need your help because all these women, in our eyes, they're wonder women, right? Right? So we're going to give them something a little extra, and I'm going to need all of you guys to help me. So you can take a couple, and I want you to go give them out to all those ladies who are standing up. Okay? Go ahead. Go give them to all those wonder women out there. Thank you, Perla, our women's ministry director. Thank you very much. May God bless you. And remember, tomorrow we're starting our women's week of prayer. It starts here to, no, Monday. It starts on Monday. It starts on Monday. Happy Sabbath, guys. You good? Let's have a word of prayer. Father God, I invite your spirit to be with us. Father we invite your spirit to continue to be with us. It's here, Father. We feel it in the, in, in the air. And, and Lord, hide me behind the cross because, Lord, someone today needs to be a mother of faith. Someone today needs to be like Jochebed. And so, Father, speak to us is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're talking about transform. And this month we're talking about women that are transformed. And Mother's Day sermon is always a little tricky and because you don't know what to say and you may offend someone. And there's so many people, so many different walks of life. And so Karen Aponte came to me on Monday or Tuesday of this week. And she wants to read something to all of us in, in honor of Mother's Day. Thank you, Pastor. On behalf of the Children's Ministry Department, this goes out to all the women who are in church today. A Mother's Day thought. To those who gave birth this year to their first child, we celebrate you. To those who lost a child this year, we mourn with you. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and wear the badge of food stains on your clothes, we appreciate you. To those who experience loss through miscarriage, failed adoptions, or running away, we mourn with you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, fraught with pokes and prods and tears and disappointment, we walk with you. Forgive us when we say foolish things. We don't mean to make this harder than it already is. To those who are foster moms, mentor moms, and spiritual moms, we need you. To those who have warm and close relationships with your children, we celebrate with you. To those who have disappointment, heartache, and distance with your children, we sit with you. To those who lost their mothers this year, we grieve with you. To those who experience abuse at the hands of your own mother, we acknowledge your experience. To those who have lived through driving tests, medical tests, and overall tests of motherhood, we are better for having you within our midst. To those who are single and long to be married and mothering your own children, we mourn that life has not turned out the way you longed for it to be. To those who step-parent, we walk with you on these very complex paths. To those who envision lavishing love on grandchildren, yet that dream has not been fulfilled, we grieve with you. To those who will have empty nesters this, in this upcoming year, we grieve and rejoice with you. 
To those who place children up for adoption, we commend you for your selflessness and remember how hard it was to hold that child in your heart. And to those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. This Mother's Day, we walk with you. Mothering is not for the faint of heart, and we have real warriors in our church. Amen. Blessings. Amen. 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 Thank you, Karen. So tomorrow's Mother's Day. Hopefully, fellas, we, we, we did our diligent in our duty. We, we brought something. But in case... Uh, this is what Maria says. Maria says, for Mother's Day, I want a massage, and I want to sleep for 12 hours straight. That's all. Uh, a piece of chocolate cake might be nice, too. So for us guys, just let them sleep. Let them sleep. Mother, mother, mother stands for mess cleaning, snack fixing, owie kissing, nightmare chasing, tickle giving, storybook reading, homework helping, carpool driving, early rising, early lasting, everlasting, real love. That's what mother stands for. Amen. Abraham Lincoln said, all that I am or ever hope to be, I owe to my angel mother. Many of us in this room, we're here today because our mothers prayed, right? Abraham Lincoln said, he said, I remember my mother's prayers and they have always followed me. They have clung to me all my life. And even though you may, don't, you may not see the results in front of you, I have baptized many people where they will testify and they say, look, my mom is not here today, but I'm here today because my mother prayed. And I can't wait to see her in heaven, and I can't wait to give her the surprise that her prayers were not in vain. Mothers, mothers hold their children's hand for a short while, but their hearts are forever. So that's why my title is My Mommy is a Wonder Woman. Remember Wonder Woman? You know, I got to be honest, you know, I, I, I collect comic books, I, I'm into superheroes, I was into Batman and Superman and Spider-Man, I was not into Wonder Woman, I got to be honest, I got to be honest, I mean, and, and you know, when I was growing up, remember this, da -da 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 -da. Wonder Woman, right, I used to only just like the beginning part, and then I said, Papi, come guys, so yeah, it's kind of corny, and you know, she's twisting, and how, how'd she run after that, but Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman is known, right? She could defend bullets, right? She could, she's strong. She flies this invisible jet. Uh, she has this lasso, right? If she, she ties you, she can find the truth. My mom did not have no lasso of truth. She had the belt of truth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> See? <laughs> Mothers are amazing. Mothers are loving. Mothers are strong. Mothers are happy. Mothers are selfless and mothers are creative. And so this is why we're talking about transform this year. And we're looking at this because at the end of the day, guys, the ultimate goal of Christianity, the ultimate goal of Christianity is for us to be transformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's not about coming to church. It's not about the checklist and I keep the Sabbath and I'm a vegetarian. I give my tithes and offering. At the end of the day, it's about in my everyday life, in my daily interactions, am I Jesus to someone else? So this is why today, as we look at this verse, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. We're talking today about a woman who was transformed. And even though she was a slave, she did not behave like a slave. Even though she was in bondage, she was able to hear and to know what God's will was for her life. And not only for her life, but for her children, especially one. I'm talking to you about Jochebed. Jochebed is the mother of Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. And if you have your Bibles... I want you to go with me to the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 1, Exodus chapter 1. For those of you who don't know the story, after Joseph went into Egypt, he, had, he brought his brothers and they had families and they grew. And all of a sudden now the Israelites 
grew more than the Egyptians. There were more Israelites than Egyptians. I'm talking to somebody because if you look at the population of the United States, there's a certain group that was the majority at one time and is no longer the majority right now. You following me? And so there's a certain group that, that a little upset, but that's a sermon for another day. At this time, the Pharaoh commanded all his people saying, every son who is born, you are to cast into the Nile and every daughter you are to keep alive. So a government decree came out that says all boys, all male child are to be thrown into the river Nile to be eaten by the crocodiles. And so many of the Israelites and, and their mothers, when they had, when they gave birth, if it was a girl, whoo. But if it was a guy, many of them tried to protect the child. But eventually, this is how it ended. Their baby was, <laughs> was sacrificed in the river Nile. So here it is. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was beautiful, she would hid him for three months. Let me talk to the mothers for a minute. Have you ever seen an ugly baby? Right? Now you have seen an ugly baby, but it wasn't your baby, right? <laughs> Let's be honest. Because your baby... Is beautiful, right? Right? Oh, okay, don't, don't. Some of you are like, okay, pastor, don't go there. So I find this verse interesting that the mother of Moses, when she saw Moses and he was beautiful, that she said, oh, este muy lindo. This is a cutie. We're going to keep this one. And it's also interesting to find out who wrote the book of Exodus. <laughs> so he kind of wrote about himself. Yeah, I was beautiful. <laughs> but let me talk about that in a minute. But the Bible tells us in Numbers that the mother of Moses, her name is Jochebed. And Jochebed's name means the glory of God or God's glory. And so when the Bible tells us that when she saw that Moses was beautiful, and in another translation it says that he was good. What Hebrews 11, chapter, verse, chapter 11, verse 23, gives us more insight of what that text means is this. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. Moses' parents, especially the mother, she said, there is something about this boy. We are in slavery. We are in bondage. But there was a promise that was made to our people that there was going to be a deliverer. And so she saw the baby and she told her husband, that's him. That's the deliverer. Ellen White tells us in the book Patriots and Prophets, believing that the time of Israel's release was drawing near and that God will raise up a deliverer for his people, determined that their little one should not be sacrificed. Faith in God strengthened their hearts and they were not afraid of the king's combatment. Follow me. Jochebed had faith. What is faith? Faith is not just believing. Faith is trusting in something that you cannot see. Hebrews 11 says that the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So what did she see? This is what she saw. Faith is the confidence that what we hope for will happen. It gives assurance about the things we cannot see. What did Jochebed see? She saw a baby. No, she did not see a baby. She saw her deliverer. She saw what her eyes, physical eyes did not see. Her spiritual eyes saw something beyond. Mothers, let me talk to you. You need to start seeing your children, not through your physical eyes, but through the spiritual eyes. You need to see your children the way God sees your children. God says that I have a purpose and plan for your life. Everyone in this room, you're not an accident. God has a plan for your life. Last night I was at a hospital. 
of an 18-year-old who was with a friend, and she went with a friend to McDonald's. Check this out. She's 18 years old, and she told her mom, Mom, I'm tired of you being so strict with me. Why don't you just let me be with my friends? Man, you don't let me go anywhere. So the mother decides, okay, at 10 o'clock at night, you can go with your friend to McDonald's. So they went to McDonald's. And on the way back from McDonald's, something happened. The car lost, lost control. She hit a tree. The driver is okay. Guess who's in the hospital? The girl that comes to this church. And her mother is telling me yesterday, crying. She's like, you know what? I've been so good. I was the one time that I let my daughter go. This was what happens. But I want to let you know, I told the mother, your daughter's alive. God is watching over her because God has a plan for her and God has a plan for your family. And so I'm talking to mothers here. You need to see your children, not through your physical eyes, but through the spiritual eyes. Because God has a plan. And Jochebed was a woman of faith. And so I'm going to challenge you for today. Women, I want you mothers to be women of faith. For you men, this is not where you tune out. And it's like, oh, the pastor's preaching to women. No, I want us to be men of faith. Amen? And what does that look like? It looks like this. Psalms 37 verse 3 says, Trust in the Lord and do what? And do good. Even though you may not see it, God is saying, I want you to trust me. Being a Wonder Woman mother means that you are going to be a woman of faith. And if you're a woman of faith, you're going to have courage. So last week I asked several of you, board members and, and members on Facebook, to send me a picture or a story of how your mother was a woman of faith. Last year I talked to you about my mom. Let me talk to you about the woman, the wonder woman in our house. The wonder woman of the house is Linda. And I can tell you stories about how she's courageous, but the one that, that I think about being wonder woman is 9-11. 9-11. I was scheduled to be at Camp Berkshire. We was having a pastor's, uh, it was a United Camp meeting, I think, if I, if I remember. And I was getting ready, and I, I woke up late. You're going to hear that story over and over from people that were in New York at the time. A lot of us missed the train. A lot of us missed. I woke up late that day. And so I'm turning on the TV. I'm watching Regis and, and Kathy Lee. And that's when, oh, my goodness, the World Trade Center is on fire. And at first I was like, wow, who's the idiot? I mean, he kind of missed it. But then all of a sudden that's when the second plane hit. And we were like, oh, no, we're under a terrorist attack. So I'm like, I ain't going to no Camp Berkshire. Not me. Uh-uh. What does my wife do? My wife is getting dressed. My wife is getting Raylan and Caleb ready. And I'm like, uh, babe, I think school suspended. <laughs> There's no school today. She goes, no. They were not in school at the time. She goes, Caleb has a therapy session today. And I'm not going to miss it. And I'm like, babe, um, there's terrorists attacking New York. I think if he misses one session, he's going to be okay. But you know how mothers, you know how you are, right? You know how you are. You're so determined. Sometimes you're so <laughs> stubborn. I'm going to be careful. I've got to be careful. i got to be careful. And so my wife packs up, not the invisible jet, the minivan. <laughs> As he drives, and she's trying to get into Brooklyn. A couple of hours later, we don't know because the cell phones are not working. And she finally comes home. And I'm like, whew, babe, what happened? She goes, you're not going to believe this. All the roads were closed, and I tried, and, and, and I just was stuck in traffic. And I fought, I bit my tongue, and I, I wanted to say, I told you so. But husbands, you know that that's not what you say. And so that is an example of a woman who's courageous, who, who she didn't care about no terrorists. She didn't care about nothing. She wanted to get my son into a ter therapy session. The second woman I want to talk to you about. Ah, what happened? Ah, uh, ah, uh, man. 
Sabine, can you help me? There is, I thought I, I, I took the slide on, I need Blair's and I need uh, the WEPA women, woman. Ay, ay, ay. My apologies. The second mother that I wanted to showcase while Sabine helps me back there is Mercy. And Blair sent me this where she talks about how her mother was an Adventist for now eight years. And she was the only Adventist Christian in her family. And her family, including Blair herself, they would make fun of her. And they would like, you know, you're, you're this fanatic now and you're this. But she says that my mom stayed true to her beliefs. And this is why not only is Mercy's here, but that's why Issa's here, Blair's here, Otis is here, Crystal is here. And so it's because Mercy did not flinch. There it is. Thank you. And so that is what she's saying. My mom was the only person in my family who gave her life to Christ and became an Adventist. She went on this journey with no support from me nor anyone else in the family. In fact, many of us used to crack jokes and made her feel like the outcast of the family. I know for a long time that she felt alone and all she wanted was at least one person in the family to just understand and support her. Through it all, she stayed faithful to God. And because of that, she's bearing fruit. Through her, God reached my aunt, my uncle, my younger cousin, my sister, my brother-in-law, and myself. My mom is my one. Wonder Woman. Amen. The next one. Ah, this one. This person said, you know, my mom is not a Wonder Woman. My mom is Wepa Woman. <laughs> and so if you can, the slide. That's not Marco. Can you believe that? That's not Marcos. I thought that was Marco. That's Jorge. That's Jorge and his mother. And he says, she was the greatest example I could ever have. She taught me honesty, faith, how to treat people. She taught me that to laugh was good. She never got upset about anything. She prayed constantly. She was very faithful on her tithes and offerings. She was always telling me that when I found myself in any situation to think to myself, what would Jesus do and follow my conscience? When you visited her home, you could not leave until she prayed. Didn't matter if you were Christian or not. She never asked, can we pray? She told you, let's pray. Her mission was to tell others and Jesus, to helping others and, and with her. Her mission was to tell others about Jesus, not always with words, but helping others with her actions. Amen? And as you can see, Jorge and his family is here today because of his mother. And so... Women of faith is the same thing that Jochebed, thank you, Sabine, is exactly what Jochebed did. The Bible says that she was a woman of faith. She was a courageous woman. And even though, even though she could have lost her life, she risked her life because she saw something in Moses. But it got to a point when she could not keep Moses quiet anymore. And the Bible says, but when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of bulrushes for him, dabbed it with asphalt and pitch, and put the child in it and laid it in the reeds by the river's bank. First thing, you need to be a woman of faith. But the second thing you need to be is a woman of action. It's not enough to be a man of faith. You also have to be a man of action. She just did not say, okay, God is going to bless this. No, she says, I'm going to do something because they're going to kill my boy. So she took a basket, and the Bible says uh, she made an ark, which is the same word as Noah's ark. She created this place that was going to protect Moses. And what they didn't show you in the movies is because they can't, right? I believe that she dropped Moses off and she hid him among the reeds, knowing that the daughters were coming. But that did not happen maybe one day. That probably was not two days. It probably was weeks. And she probably left him during the day, and then at night she would come, nurse the baby, take him home, and then bring him back. She did not want to risk losing her baby. She was a woman of action. The Bible says that faith without action is what? And so here it is. True faith manifests itself through our actions. But let, don't kid yourself. It still was a painful thing. Mothers, can you imagine how that felt? 
knowing that that may be the last time you see her, my child. Even though she knew God has a plan for my baby. But still, a crocodile could eat him up. Can you imagine? Let me talk to the mothers for a minute. Can you imagine leaving the baby and closing that basket and, 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 and just saying, okay, God, protect my child. Fathers, the other day, this week, my son is getting, he, did, he took his SAT last, Friday, last Sunday. And so I picked him up this week and I started asking him, okay, so what college are you going to go to? And, you know, I'm hoping, you know, that he's going to, I said to him, I heard, I heard that you are leaving. And I was hoping that he said, well, you know what, Dad, I'm just exploring some options. You know, yeah, you work with me, right? He goes, no, I'm leaving, Dad. <laughs> I'm leaving. And when he said that, it's like, I don't know, it broke my heart. I'm like, oh, my goodness, my baby's leaving. Now, that's the, that's just the father. Can you imagine the mother? Mothers, can you imagine what Jochebed, even though she knew that God has a plan for her son, she did not, she could not, probably, it was not easy for her. See, being a woman of faith, being a man of faith, you have to be a woman and man of action. And so the Bible says that she dropped the baby and one day, one day, the Pharaoh's daughter came and all of a sudden Miriam came out and said, hey, uh, shall I go and call a nurse for you from the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child for you? Follow the story. Psalms 37 verse 3 says, trust in the Lord and do good. Amen. But verse 4, look at what verse says. Verse 4 says, delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. What did Jochebed want it more than anything? She wanted her son. And because she trusted in God and because she did action, God rewarded her and says, not only are you going to take care of the baby, but the government is going to pay for it. <laughs> right? Isn't that cool? The Bible says, look at what it says in, in Patriots and Prophets. God heard the mother's prayer. Her faith had been rewarded. It was with deep gratitude that she entered upon her now safe and happy task. She faithfully improved her opportunity to educate her child for God. She felt confident that he had been preserved for some great work, and she knew that he must soon be given up to the royal mother to be surrounded with the influences that would tend to lead him away from God. She says, okay, I have my son back, but she did not sleep on it. She made sure that they, she was going to teach him about God. She was going to teach him about the ways of God. It says here, it says here, all this rendered her more diligent and careful in his instruction than in that of her other children. She endeavored to imbue his mind with the fear of God and the love of truth and justice and earnestly prayed that he might be preserved from every corrupting influence. She showed him the folly and sin of idolatry and early taught him how to bow down and pray to the living God who alone could hear him and help him in every emergency. Parents, are we doing that with our children? Are you teaching your children about God? Are you teaching them how to honor God? It is not enough to bring them to church. It's not enough. Being a Christian is not how you dress and what you wear in the building. It's how you behave outside the building. Our mission is to tell the world Jesus is coming soon. And guess what? We are not going to reach their generation. Who's going to reach their generation? They are. But we need to equip them. You need to empower them. You need to give them what they need. Because God is coming soon. But also the time of trouble is also coming. Jochebed knew and she understood, wait a minute, I am going to prepare my son. That when she, when he goes into the palace, and what you don't know, if you study history, Moses was a general in Egypt. Look it up. There, there were two famous wars that the Egyptians had against Ethiopia. They, they fought twice the Ethiopians. And twice the Egyptians overthrew the Ethiopians. And guess who was the general? Moses. During his 20s and 30s, Moses was the man. Moses was being trained to be the next pharaoh. So when mama 
released Moses to the stepmother. The stepmother was training him, listen to me, to be successful in the world. She wanted him to have all the best career. She wanted him to have all the accolades. She wanted him to have the fat bank account. But Moses, before he went into Pharaoh's house, real mother invested in his spiritual life. You following me? Because the Bible, we don't know. The Bible doesn't tell us how old Moses was when he went to Pharaoh's house. But Ellen White tells us she kept the boy as long as she could, but was obliged to give him up when he was about what? 12 years old. From his humble cabin home, he was taken to the royal palace to the daughter of Pharaoh, and he became her son. Yet even here, he did not lose the impressions received in childhood, the lessons learned at his whose side? It wasn't church. It wasn't the father's side. It's what the mother taught Moses that he did not forget. They were a shield from the pride, the infidelity, and the vice that flourished amid the splendor of his court. And that is why. And the child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. So she called him Moses, saying, because I drew him out of the water. You have to be a man and woman of faith. You have to be a man and woman of action. But the last thing you need to do, you need to be a woman and a man of surrender. This is the second time that the mother surrenders her child. This is the second time she surrenders and gives up her child up. What do you need to surrender? What do you need to let go? What's holding you back from being a transformed man or transformed woman? You can be a man and woman of faith. You can be very busy in the church, but if you have not surrendered, you will not be transformed. Look what the Bible says in Psalms 37. David says, trust in the Lord and do good. For delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. I know that there are mothers here, you're praying for your children. And mothers, if, you, if your children are too small, start praying for them. Because when they hit 12, 13, that's when they're going to want to leave the church. And trust me, that's when you're going we're gonna, to you're gonna have fasting and prayer. You want to want the church to pray. But now is a time when you need to invest right now. You need to trust your child. Guess what? Then God is going to say, I will give you the desires of your heart. But number five says you need to commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he will do it. What does it mean for you to commit? It means that you need to commit to the ways of God. I can't do it for you. Your husband can't do it for you. Your wife can't do it for you. You need all of us here. We need to give an account to God because God says, I have a purpose and a plan for your life. Stop writing on your wife. Stop writing on your husband. I am the one that died for you. I am the one that can equip you and empower you to be successful. But you have to. Trust me. You need to delight yourself in me. You need to commit yourself. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust in the Lord with what? Trust in the Lord not with some of your heart. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. Jochebed could have said, this is crazy. I'm not going to put my son in the River Nile. That is crazy. That's ludicrous. I am not going to do that. But she did not trust in herself. She followed the leading of God. And there's going to be things that your child will do. I thank God. When my son says, I want to leave, it reminded me of when I told my mom, Mom, I'm out of here. I'm done. And my story was, I, I wanted to get so far away from my mom. My mom is watching. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> I wanted to get so far away from my mom that I wanted to go to Canada. But God opened up a way where I went to Texas. And in Texas, not only did I find God, but I found my leadership role. I found myself as a pastor. If I would have stayed in my mother's house, if I would have stayed where it was comfortable for me, you would have never met Pastor Lafitte. I would have been what I was doing. And so when my son says, I have to leave, just as what God did for me, I'm going to pray that God will do the same for my son. 
You need to let go. You need to let go of your children and let God. Because here's what happened as I close. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24. Look at this. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin. Do you understand what's, what's happening? He said, I don't want the throne. I don't want to be the, the leader of Egypt because I remember what my mother taught me. I am an Israelite and God has called me to do his bidding. Wow. Wow. Where did he get that from? Who put that in him? His mother. The Bible says, here's the thing. Jochebed never saw her son open the Red Sea. Jochebed never saw her son come down from Mount Sinai with the Ten Commandments. Jochebed never saw Moses hitting a rock and water coming out. She never saw it with her physical eyes. But with her spiritual eyes, she said, that's my baby. That's my boy. I knew that God had a plan for his life. And can you imagine the great surprise when Moses meets his mother? Don't give up. Keep praying for your children. Because here's what I, as I close, if you want to be Jochebed, I need you to be a woman of faith. I want you to be a woman of action. And I need you to be a woman of surrender. Men, I need you to be men of faith. I need you to be men of action. And I need you to be men who surrenders. You know why? Because that's what Jesus did. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Do you understand that the, the, the story of Moses got played out in the life of Jesus? God the Father placed Jesus in this world. Have you seen the movie The Shack? Some of you are messed up because in the movie, it's, it's the same in the book, they portray God as a woman. And so a lot of you are like, oh no, how can they portray God as a woman? Time out. The Bible says that we were created in whose image? In God's image. So I believe that God placed certain attributes in man and he, he, he put some attributes of himself in a woman. And so here is God the Father letting go of his son. And the Bible says, and Ellen White says, that the salvation of us and the salvation of his own son was in a balance. At any moment in time, Jesus could have been lost like us. But as he let go of Jesus, just as Miriam was watching over Moses... The Holy Spirit was watching over Jesus. And so Jesus was a man of faith. Jesus was a man of action. And Jesus surrendered his life daily to his father. So a mother loves us. But there is no greater love than the love of God. Never forget that. As we celebrate Mother's Day tomorrow, which I think you, get, you guys get robbed you guys deserve every day. Amen, amen. Linda, you heard that? Every day. You deserve Mother's Day. God deserves to be honored, not just on the seventh day. God needs to be honored every day. Because no greater love did he bestow upon us. So as we celebrate what mothers do for us, it's a microcosm of what Jesus has done for us. So as the praise team is, out, is, is coming to sing, I want to do something. I want to do something. I'm going to ask the women, all the women, I want the women to stand. I want the women to stand as we sing. All the women, 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 all the women. And I know in a minute we're going to sing and then we're all going to stand. But let me just pray with you right now. Father God, I pray a special blessing upon every woman, every young girl that is here. Because Father, the world, especially the devil, hates them. Because Father, they have a power 
There's a saying that says that she who rocks the cradle rocks the world. And so, Lord, they have so much influence. And even if they don't have children of their own, I know that they have served mentoring other children. And so I pray that you may bless them. P bless the young girls. That, Father, you may lead them to the man that's going to respect them. The man that is going to help them form a home. Because, Father, let's not forget this. You're coming soon. Yes, we're looking at the world and what's happening in the government. And, and we know that something is going to happen. So when are we going to get our act together? And so I pray, just as Jochebed said, uh-uh, I am going to preserve and protect my son. I pray that you may give that same spirit to these women. That they may teach their children. That they may instill the values and the love of God in them. Because, Lord, we know there's going to come a time when pastors are going to be locked up. And there will no longer be church buildings. And the, the Adventist church as we know it, it won't no longer be. So who is going to finish this work? Moses. Men like Moses and women like Esther's. So, Father, it is now that we need to prepare them. So, Father, bless them and keep them is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we all can stand as we sing.
God, help us to be where you are. I pray a special blessing upon us as we leave. That, Father, this week we may begin instructing our children to love and to obey you. Take us now home safely is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you and happy Mother's Day. Says I'm